Buenos dias, mis amigos. Yeah. All right, now, talk about the fact that these children that come into the Millennial Kingdom that uh, have the choice because they come in and they're alive. We also have the people that have been in heaven, the tribulation uh, folks have been raptured, and the fact is they have glorified bodies. Tell the difference between a regular physical body and a glorified body. Well, the glorified body, for example, we're talking about them having children, the physical body people. Uh, they will have a relationship with a woman. We'll know who our wife is, or our husband was, and we'll understand that relationship of fellowship with them, but not have any physical union. Therefore, as Christians, those who are raptured out before the tribulation begins, they'll have a glorified body. They will not have a sexual relationship. These physical bodied people, the ones that eat of the tree of life and live forever, they'll be able to have children. And not only in the kingdom period, that thousand years, but really the kingdom is the front porch of eternity future and everything that happens in the kingdom will extend on to eternity future and these physical body people will be able to have children in eternity future you get that they'll be able to have sex forever and ever and ever oh so wonderful just dirty stinky filthy sex forever and ever and ever and ever and ever in I mean, how wonderful is that, right? I mean, just sex, sex, sex. Just fantastic, right? Except there's just a little bit of a problem here. And that is the fact that this is a contradiction to the entire Scripture. Okay? Everything from Genesis to Revelation is in contradiction with what these two gentlemen are teaching. Uh, they will have a relationship with a woman. They will have a rela That means dirty, stinky, filthy, rotten sex. Yeah, I mean, if I say it the way that he says it, does that make it nicer? Does it make it more true? Think about that. I mean, if I say it with the uh, cunning craftiness, <laughs> if I say it in a very sweet and soft sort of way, will that make it more true? Then, if I say dirty, stinky sex, it's the same thing. And what these guys are teaching is dirty, stinky sex for all eternity. I'm not putting my hope into that at all. Not at all. I want a better world. I'm putting my hope into a much better world than this dirty, stinky, filthy, sex-ridden world that we live in now. All right. So in Matthew 22, for example, For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. So in the resurrection, we are resurrected when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. All right, now i got to... I gotta treat every every video, every day, every single day. I gotta treat this as though uh, somebody's watching that does not is not familiar with me, right? So, if you are feel familiar with me, you're gonna notice I'm gonna go over the same verses all the time, all the time. All right. So, I lost my train of thought. So in the resurrection, we are lifted up, we are changed in a moment. Right, okay, no, I guess this is the, the point I was wanting to make here. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruit. Afterward, they that are Christ that is coming. So when Jesus Christ comes in the clouds of heaven, we are lifted up to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Right, so in the resurrection... This is the resurrection when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Right? The resurrection is on the last day. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. 
right? For when this happens, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. There will be no more death. All right now, keep that in mind. All right, I got one more to show you. I got one more to show you in First Thessalonians four. All right, in First Thessalonians four, it says, "For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with the shout of the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air." And so shall we ever be with the Lord. All right, so this is the same thing, same event. It's not, this doesn't happen 20 different times. All right, it's the same event. It tells us over and over and over and over and over and over again, all throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, that when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we will be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and we shall be raised incorruptible. This is the resurrection. This is when we are resurrect resurrected. All right. So when Jesus says in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given a marriage, but are as the angels of God. He's talking about us being changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. And there will be no more marriages after this. Also, important very very important when this happens then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory there will be no more death after the judgment of God the judgment of God is who is saved and who is not saved all those who are not saved will die the second death Alright, now I want to share a verse with you, just to give you something to think about. Fear not him that can kill the body, but not the soul. Fear him that can kill both body and soul in hell. And of course, that's God Almighty. That is God Almighty at the judgment day. If you're not saved, then he will destroy both your body and your soul in hell. That's the second death. Right? And of course we read about the second death somewhere in the Bible, don't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right there. Revelation 2. He that overcomes shall not be heard of the second death. Oh, look at that. And Revelation 21, which is the second death. Alright, that's the judgment of God. Oh, and there it is again in Revelation 20. And death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. Oh, and curiously, here in Revelation 20, verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. Jesus Christ is the first resurrection. Jesus even says, I am the resurrection. We are partakers of his resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part in his resurrection right he is the first resurrection he is the first fruit of them that slept right he is the first fruits of them that slept for by for since by man came death by man came also the resurrection of the dead for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order. Christ, the first fruit, the first resurrection, the first fruits, first resurrection, first fruits, first resurrection, first fruits, first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. Right? Once we are born of God, the second death has no power over us ever. Once we have everlasting life, we have life that lasts forever. Therefore, the second death has no power. All right, pretty simple, straightforward, basic stuff, right? 
a lot of people don't get it and I think there's a good reason why they don't get it and they don't deserve to get it because they don't believe the written word of God alright so very very simple right when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven we are lifted up to meet the Lord in the air right to meet the Lord in the air our enemy is gathered at our feet it's like Genesis 3 verse 15 the Lord said to the serpent I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel we're up in the air with the Lord to meet the Lord we're up in the air with the Lord the serpent and his people are at our feet and Jesus stumps his foot on the head of the serpent destroying all evil forever for he must reign till he's put all enemies under his feet right so, and this is Genesis to Revelation it's amazing all right so knowing that in the resurrection there's no more dirty stinky filthy sex we are transformed from this world into a much much better world if you go back to the genesis of this this whole dirty stinky filthy sex thing um, you know if you if you would have read the, you know at least the first couple of chapters of the Bible you would have known that it was because Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that it God you know not only cursed the serpent oh was that Genesis 3 excuse me okay you gotta read three chapters at least right and because Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil then God put it on um, man to plow the field and then the woman to uh, to have children in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children right right there was 16 and, the, and unto the woman he said I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children and thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee now this is because they ate of the tree of the good uh, uh, I'm sorry ate from the tree of the good uh, ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil right because this happened now there's a difference between good and evil to put it simply right the difference between good and evil right and there's the seed of the serpent being representing evil the seed of the woman representing good and then the seed of the woman will stomp his foot on the head of the serpent destroying all evil forever and ever that's what we're putting our hope into but because this happened because they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil we have good and evil and we have this um, childbearing you know women getting pregnant and dirty stinky filthy sex sexual relations or whatever you want to call it say it as nice as possible that's fine but because of that we have sex right now when Jesus returns he's gonna put it in to not just you know not just evil the word evil but all things related including sex all right and the most clearest passage in the Bible in my opinion is first John chapter 2 
when John writes, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Dirty, stinky, filthy sex is going to come to an end when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. You know, you think about Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, when it says, The sun shall be darkened, and the, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. The world is going to pass away. Right? This is clear, crystal, crystal clear all throughout the Bible. And of course, uh, to me, Second Peter 3 is as strong as evidence as you'll find anywhere in the Bible when it says, The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. This world's come to an end. So in First John chapter 2 when it says, the world passes away. That's when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. There's just no way to get around it. Okay. So, <laughs> it should be pretty obvious. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, all evil, including childbearing, is going to be done away with. Hey, when I say childbearing, I mean dirty, stinky sex. These guys are putting their hope into life, eternal life, of dirty, stinky sex. Now, listen, consider this. If what I'm saying is true, this ought to be supported by the Bible, right? If what I'm saying is true, that these guys are putting their hope into an eternal life of dirty, stinky sex, if that's true, then it should be in the Bible, and it is. Absolutely, and it's what's a stern warning. It's a stern warning. Second Peter chapter three. You know what I just read for you? The day of the Lord will come as a thief, and the night in which the heaven shall pass away with great noise, and the element shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works, including dirty, stinky sex that are therein, shall be burned up. What if you just go up just a little teeny bit? No. Yes. Verse 3. Would it help if I start out of verse 1? See, I, I really, I, I wonder how people don't know this, how, how they miss it. It's, it's astonishing to me. I wonder if people even read their Bible anymore. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before the holy prophets and of the commandment to of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, their own lusts, you know what that means, don't you? Their own dirty, stinky, filthy perversions. That's what that means. Walking after their own lust. So when these men are talking about a, a eternal life of sexual pleasure, they're walking after their own perversions, their own lust. They think that they're going to be changed transformed, have eternal life, and be able to have sex, sex, sex. And that's what they're teaching. That's their religion. They're disguising it as Christianity. And the Bible warns us of this over and over and over and over again. Isn't this curious? Knowing this first. He's not saying second, third, or put this in the back of your mind, or and understand this also. No. It says, it says knowing this 
first that there shall come in the last day scoffers walking after their own lust. Well, what do you mean? That's not enough for you? Well, let's go to Jude. Where are we at here? Let's go to Jude. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, dirty, stinky, filthy sex addicts, having not the spirit. This is a warning, warning over and over and over again. You think about this, when the disciples came to Jesus and asked him, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? They wanted to know about the end of the world just like I wanted to know. And Jesus tells us, Jesus told them, and he's telling us, and what's the very first thing that he says when he's asked about the sign of his coming and of the end of the world? The very first thing he says is, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. Many shall come in my name, saying that I, Jesus, am Christ. These guys say Jesus is the Christ. They come in the name of Jesus, and they deceive many. Right? And that, it's, real, it's real easy to see. It's so crystal clear and to understand because what they teach is contrary to the written word of God. And the key to being able to see is believing in the written word of God. You ought to know, you ought to understand that these words come directly from God above. Right, if you got a King James Bible, these words are the perfect pure word of God in the English language. If you don't believe that, then you're not going to be able to see all the things that you want to see. Right? It's really that simple. Even unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. It's about faith. It's always been about faith. So, all right, so that's that's that for, I just want to, I'm going to, I have to harp on this because nobody else is teaching it. Nobody. And it's crystal, it's crystal clear right there in the Bible. It's all throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. So why aren't, why aren't they teaching it? It's because they're too busy teaching eternal sex. And they're too busy and they're with their head in the clouds thinking about sex, sex, sex. They're all perverse, every one of them. So why would you, a child of God, put your trust in these perverts over instead of the written word of God. Why? Why would you do that? Well, that's what's happening today with a lot of people. And look, this, I have to. I, I'm, I just, I have to keep harping on this. But I want to do, I want to uh, go over the comments here. I got some great comments and for some whatever reason, um, this video here is getting a lot of views in comparison with my other videos. When does that rapture take place? I saw I want to read some of these comments because uh, they're fantastic thoughts and uh, maybe somebody, maybe I can help somebody also. Maybe it helps me. Alright. Den of Earth under the Everlast 5138 says and Jesus even said that John the Baptist was the returned Elijah and he was beheaded and this makes sense because JTB John the Baptist didn't even know that he was Elijah when asked he said no but that also makes sense because we don't know our past lives 
That could also be the mystery of eternal life. Getting to come back and live again, we won't know until it's all over. Yeah, well, I don't know who we, you got you and the turd in your pocket, but I already know that this idea of, uh, what do you call it? It's a Hinduism. It's uh, reincarnation. That's ridiculous. Okay. Number, it, I mean, it's just, you know, I don't want to belittle people, but the, you're not, it's like take a deep breath. It's like you're not getting enough oxygen into your brain. You're not able to think if you're believing in reincarnation. All right. This is little kid stuff. You're not a little kid anymore. Right, the idea of reincarnation is it's very low IQ stuff. And not only that, I don't know I don't think it's possible. You would have to really explain to me how it's possible for somebody to believe in reincarnation and to also be born of the Spirit of God. What you're suggesting is you want to come back into this filthy world. You want to die and then, you know, go through all this misery that we go through on a daily basis. And you want to come back and do it all over again? I want no part of that. I'd rather God just end it right now than to come back and go through all this misery over and over again for all eternity. To go through the, the, the misery of, of heartache the misery of pain, the misery of death, get to come back and do it all over again? No, no, no. The only reason you're wanting to come back and do it all over again is because you want to be a 16-year-old pervert having sex with lots of girls. That's it. It's all based on sex. And it's, it's because the human heart is desperately wicked. All right. So I hope I'm not too strong with my words, but come on. Cool. Now, you had a good idea here, trying to make a comparison with John and Elijah. You had you could have you went somewhere positive with that. Lead star dude. Okay, the rapture happens at the sixth seal on a future feast of trumpets. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. This should be 370 days before the Battle of Armageddon on the Day of Atonement that following year. All right, so now you're you're having you're having to do, you know, you have to go through all sorts of, uh, you have to do a song and dance and go through a bunch of hoops and and get yourself so dizzy that nobody knows what you're talking about. 370 days before the Battle of Armageddon. On the Day of Atonement, the following year, uh, you know, it's just it's too much. It's it would be too much for me to to correct you. I mean, the simplest way to say this: the sixth seal is the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is the day, great day, the great and terrible day of the Lord. The sixth seal is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. When he comes in the clouds of heaven, we are lifted up into the air to meet the Lord in the air, and then our enemy is gathered at our feet, and Jesus stomps his foot on the head of the serpent. That's the sixth seal. The seventh is when there's peace, the new heavens and the new earth. All this stuff here, 370 days before the battle of Ar The sixth seal on the battle of Armageddon, the day of atonement. Okay, so if I feel like you... You're just throwing words, throwing words on a computer screen. It's not that complicated, man. It's not. Let's see. Here's how easy it is. Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. We are lifted up. The unsaved are destroyed. We are set back down on a new heaven and new earth. That's it's that simple. All right. It's not complicated. It's not rocket science. It's not meant to be complicated. It's not meant to be complicated at all. The law of the Lord is perfect. The law of the Lord is perfect. The law of the Lord is per perfect converting the soul. The law of the Lord is perfect converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure making wise the simple. 
making wise dummies like me and you, right? The law of the Lord is perfect. The law of the Lord is perfect. It's not that complicated. I, I don't want to get into Armageddon. I, I, I kind of want to, but I don't want to. Because that'll take 10 minutes. It's not that complicated. The rapture happens before Jesus' second coming. Okay. All right, so now we're just saying to hell with what the Bible says, right? To hell with what the Bible says. Reverend Smitty says the rapture happens before Jesus' second coming. Okay. All right, well, let's see here. Let's see here. Let's go to Matthew 24. Let's see. Then there shall appear the sign of the Son of Man, which is Jesus, in the clouds of heaven. <laughs> and he shall send his angels to gather together his elect. That right there alone <laughs> destroys this idea. Where are we at here? I can't figure out where I'm at. Okay. That alone destroys this idea. Before Jesus' second, the rapture happens before Jesus. That's not supported by the Bible at all. As the saints come with Jesus at his second coming. Alright, so you're confused because when we are lifted up, we are with Jesus and we are with God. Jesus is God. We are with God when fire comes down from heaven and destroys all the evil people right we're the army of God right and when this battle takes place we are joined together with the Lord up in the air and fire comes down from God we are of God we are born of God we are the army of God we are, even though we're in this world, we are not of this world, and we will be taken up, up. We will be taken up out of this world on the last day. First Thessalonians four, the second coming is a different event to the rapture of the saints. Okay, so that's just now we're just going completely nonsensical. Of course, uh, not surprising when you make this first comment. Ken H three three four four. So this is what happens when you don't believe the written word of God. Just like it says in here, let's do it this one. I will choose their delusions because they do not believe. When I spake, they did not hear. Right? And I will bring their fears upon them. They deserve to be delusional because they do not believe the written word of God. They don't believe the Bible that they hold in their hands. The end of the okay, so from Sonic Grace, the end of the world was the end of the old covenant. Huh? Behold, there is a new world, a new covenant. Okay. John was caught up. Met God, John. Oh, no, hold on a second. John was caught up. Met God. John was caught up met God. Many early church saints were caught up, met God. When will you meet God? Uh, I'm not sure. I, I'm not even sure what you're talking about here. Maybe I need more coffee. The end of the world. Oh, so there's... Are you saying that nobody's dying? Are you saying... There's no more pain, no more sorrow, no more crying. Is that what you're saying? I'm. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you almost had something there. You almost had something, but then you fell off the cliff. So those of us that are born of God, those of us that are born again, we are born of the Spirit of God. We have God abiding in us, and we abide in God. So then there's no reason to ask, when will you meet God? God is in me, and I in God. Right. Leroy Braun. 
4106, says, Peter denying doesn't mean he didn't believe. I agree. The allegation against Peter was that he was friends with Jesus, and Peter outright lied about it. Yep, that's right. Peter was friends with Jesus. And Peter outright lied about him. That's right. Even Peter knew what he was lying. That's right. He did. But he was fearful. That's why he lied. Because it was undeniable he knew Jesus. No question about that. And, and those people that accused him. They knew he knew Jesus. But Peter was afraid. And obviously his problem was he put more fear into man than he did God. And he... I mean, it's natural, right? When people are under, you know, when they're scared, they they react without thinking. It's happened to me. It's happened to you. It's natural, right? It happens. And, of course, once Peter ripped, came to his senses, he realized what he was doing, and he whipped, or he wept bitterly, right? He wept bitterly. He wept, wept, wept bitterly. Alright, he wept bitterly. And he went out and he wept bitterly. And Peter went out and wept bitterly, right? He wept bitterly. See, the, you know, the, the spirit was willing, right? But the flesh is weak. And it's really another example of uh, why we put our hope into a better world, right? A world where there is no more crying. A world where there is no more fear. You know, where the, uh, there's no more evil. No more dirty, stinky sex. I mean, come on. Uh, too many, let's see. It was undeniable that he knew Jesus. Too many verses say that faith is a perpetual state. Not a one-time event. Alright, see. Are you trying to backtrack now or something? I'm not sure. Too many verses say that faith is a perpetual state. Whose faith? Alright, I'm not sure. Let's say, I mean, how much faith... Did Jesus, did, how much faith did Peter have in Jesus when he when he denied him three times? Uh, he's lacking. What? He, <laughs> oh goodness, this this ain't gonna work out too well for you. O oh, ye of little faith, wherefore if God so clothed the grass of the field which is today and tomorrow's cast into the oven, shall He not much more clothe you, O oh, ye of little faith? Alright, so you want to say faith is is what? It's not a one-time event, it's perpetual. Uh, Alright, so let's see where you're going with this. And that while we believe we are being saved, and that while we believe that we are being saved, being saved, being saved. What do you mean? We're, what is God cooking the books or something? Well, what's that even mean? We're being saved. Oh, God is, he's, he's fixing this. He's doing, you know, he's turning a screw here and he's turning a screw there. What are you talking about? Being saved. That's not in the Bible. That's not in the Bible. What is in the Bible is that we, right now, we that are born of God, we have eternal life right now. He that believes on the Son has eternal life. So when we are born of God, we can never die. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Right now, he that believes on me has everlasting life. Whoever shall drink of the water that I shall give him shall never never thirst never thirst so once we are born of God once we have eternal life we have eternal life 
Whosoever drinks of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. Okay, so once we drink of the water that Jesus gives us, which happens when we are born of the Spirit of God, when we are born of God, we drink of His water. That's when we believe in Him. And that's by grace are we saved through faith and not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. So when we are born of God, when we are given this gift by God, we shall never thirst again. And we have, we that are born of God, have everlasting life right now. We have eternal life right now. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. And again, once we are saved, we are saved forever. You can't have eternal life and then lose it because that's not eternal life it's impossible it's an illogical uh, statement to say that you can have eternal life and lose it nonsensical okay we're not being saved I'm not being saved I am saved I am secured secu sealed secured sanctified saved saved secured sealed sanctified forever all right, we are sealed unto the day of redemption. Right? Ye are sealed. You're, you're secure, sanctified, saved forever. Right? And Jesus even says, All that the Father has given me, I shall lose nothing. You can't lose your salvation, buddy. That's, that's, what we're, that's why it's such good news because we can't screw it up from the beginning of time Adam and Eve they screwed it up and men have been screwing it up ever since and the whole reason we need a savior is because we can't do it ourselves we're a bunch of screw ups we need a savior so if it was possible to lose your uh, salvation then we would all lose it because we're all a bunch of screw-ups. Thanks be to God that Jesus Christ has done it all. He's done it all for us. So we don't. There's nothing we could do it to begin with that would be good enough to be saved because none of us are good enough. But thanks be to God that Jesus Christ has come and done it all for us. Go and learn what this means. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Go and learn what that means. All right. Our only, our only hope. Uh, we are one hundred percent at the mercy of God. One hundred percent. Okay. That being saved. Come on. And while that we believe we are being saved and are as good as saved, not. Well, I am saved. Good as saved. I am saved. I am sealed, secure, sanctified forever through the Lord Jesus Christ. But one can reject the gift of grace any time. Oh, oh, is that right? Yeah, I just re What do you mean, reject it? You mean never receive it? Okay, I can buy that. But once you are born of God, you don't, you're not born of God by your... It's not something you do. It's something that is given to us. We don't do anything to earn it. Neither can we do anything to lose it. Imagine you have a child. And your child does the worst thing ever. You, you, what, you no longer love your child? Because your child going through a phase where he hates you and says bad things to you. He's, you're just going to forget that he's your child? No, that nev that doesn't happen. It doesn't happen that way. And I look, whatever our love for our child is, God's love for us is much greater. Much greater. Right, Satanists establish a ritual. doesn't matter what Satanists do. They could poop in a pot and it just it doesn't mean the same thing. It doesn't mean a different thing. It doesn't mean anything. 
Satanists establish a ritual that unbaptized Christians doesn't mean they can have unbaptized Christians. All right? To me, it sounds like you're speaking as a Satanist. These ex-Christians know the Bible. No, they don't. That. Nah. They don't know the Bible. Even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. They don't know the Bible. They don't know the Bible at all. They don't understand it. Because they don't believe it. They don't understand it. They don't know it. All right? You're imagining that these Satanists are experts at the Bible. That's your imagination. It's not true at all. They believe Jesus is real. Thou believest one God, thou doest well. For the devils believe also. Let's see if I can find a verse here. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. The devils being spirits absent of the Spirit of God. Where are we at here? Believe that God the Father is real. Believe devils and demons are real. And specifically and categorically reject Christ by unbaptizing and choose to worship Satan. Well, that's too bad for them. All right. I mean, you're speaking as if you're one of them. If you're right, then God will force Satan in his kingdom against their emphatic will. Oh, okay, so you're, you're, you're wanting to say these Satanists, these imaginary Satanists, are saved. They're born of God. Well, if, one, if they are, it, it, let's go with what you're saying here. These, these guys... Um, I don't know, the whole group of your buddies or something? I'm not sure who you're talking about. Are these people you hang out with, Leroy? Your drinking buddies or something? Your dope smoking buddies? Well, whoever you're talking about, let's say that they are born of God. Then, yeah, you know, they go, they go, you know, drinking beer and worshiping Satan, you know, whatever. Yeah, I, I can't even imagine what kind of scenario you're trying to pick. What you what, what kind of scenario you're trying to paint here? I, I don't know. Go out and murder a bunch of people. Hey, you know, um, what whatever the worst thing is imaginable is. They go out and once they're born of God, they they can't lose it. They can do sacrifices and all that. Now, Leroy, I would just suggest that maybe hey maybe your drinking buddies aren't really saved hmm? it's just a thought man just a, maybe they're lying to you Leroy if they're lying about other things it's maybe they're they're lying to you about this you can't know who's saved and who's not saved you can't know it. You can know if you're saved. You can't know if your drinking buddy's saved. So I wouldn't put my trust in your drinking buddy. I would put my trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and believe the written word of God. Right? I mean, you're you're trying to create a scenario here. Sounds wonderful. The fact of the matter is, even if what you're saying is true, and they truly are born of God, then they're still saved. Nothing can change that. Right? Nothing at all. You're stuck, Chuck. Right? Stuck, Chuck. You have everlasting life, and nothing can ever take that away. That's the good news. Alright, so let's say these guys, they go around killing a bunch of people and doing awful stuff, and they're saved. Now, the Spirit of God is going to convict them, uh, whom the Father loves. He scourges. Uh, let's see if I can find that verse here. I don't know. I can't find it. Uh, let me think here. Oh, is it chastise? 
for whom the Father loveth, or for, what is that? Give me a second here, I think. I gotta think. Nope. Okay. Oh. Oh my goodness, I can't remember. No, that's not it. It's... There it is. For whom the Lord, there we go, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourges every man whom he receives. So let's say in your scenario, these guys are going up, they're, they're saved, and um, doing all this bad stuff. Well, the Spirit of God is going to convict them heavily. And they're going to know, they're going to know constantly. And they're going to be tormented constantly by whatever evil deeds that they're doing. Constantly. It's overwhelming. And you're more worried about this false scenario than you are about the true gospel of Jesus Christ. The good news that we have eternal life in the Lord Jesus and he has done all the work for us. You're more worried about what? The Satan worshippers? You're trying to paint a scenario? of extremity if that's true Jesus did not make us free no yeah, no <laughs> see you just went you just went dumb right there you went dumb you went from a crazy extreme example which I appreciate to like your brain shut off all right if the son of man shall make you free you shall be free indeed you're free you go free kill People have sex with people, whatever. You're free to do whatever you want. You are. And when the time comes and we are resurrected, we'll, we'll have freedom. And um, there will be no more fear of pain and death and sorrow. And the work of our hands will be our own. I mean, right now we have freedom. Period. There's nothing... We're not bound by the law. We're not under the law. We're not under the curse. Those that are, you're saying, well, you can't do that. I mean, you can't worship Satan. But you think that's freedom? Being under rules? But being under these laws that say you can't do this, you can't do that? That's not freedom. Freedom is being free from the law. Being free to be able to do whatever you want. You just went dumb. You went backwards. You just went... Avoid, you just said, the hell with logic. And let's just, out of thin air, just throw out this statement that Jesus did not make us If that's true, Jesus did not make us free. It sounds more like a trap. You're trapped into eternal life with 100% peace. If that sounds like a trap to you, buddy, you're on the wrong side of the fence. We are literally saved at first resurrection. The first resurrection is the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus even says himself, I am the resurrection. Till then it is a promise, and that's why we need faith. And so you're with Peter here and you're saying that he wasn't saved the way he was denying and rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ and then so it begs the question how did he get resaved <laughs> and then again all these people that were saved right the, the, the Satan worshippers they were saved and then they denied uh, in according to your theory they became unsaved all right so then again how did they become resaved after they lost their salvation how do they gain it back and whatever your answer is, the next statement for me is going to be, well, then Jesus Christ died in vain, didn't he? Right? You, can't, you can't get around it. You're not putting any thought into it, and there might be a good reason why you can't understand it. Right? If you don't believe the written word of God, there's 
most certainty going to be that you don't understand it because you don't believe it. Tell then his problems when you know, why are you walking around in glorified incredible body? Why are you walking around in a glorified incredible body? I don't even look. Is that from you or is that from your drinking buddies? Alright, I appreciate the comments here. Oh, here's another one from Leroy. Yeah, I don't understand it either. They adopt. Oh my goodness sakes. Oh my goodness sakes. Okay. Yeah, I don't understand it either. They adopt a religion based on the Bible, but then deny parts of the Bible, like you said. If they are right, then the Bible is false. But we have to remember that many wolves, deliberate deceivers, will enter the church and deceive many. Yeah, when I say that, when I when I agree with this here, that many wolves will enter the church, I'm not talking about you know, like five percent or six percent or six point three percent. I'm talking about ninety nine point nine percent of the teachers in the church are deceivers. Ninety nine point nine percent of everyone that stands on behind on behind the podium or touches the microphone in the church today, ninety nine point nine percent of them are deceivers. And all they want is money. And to have sex with your wife and your daughter and um, whoever they can get their filthy hands on. I'm not kidding you. I'm not kidding you at all. And that, that goes for everywhere. All around the world. I went to my niece's church and the pastor preached that we are good. Uh, no we're not, but not good enough. There's none good. There's none that do with righteousness. There's n okay. And to be saved, we must first make ourselves good enough and then believe in Jesus. Okay. All right, so that's not supported by the Bible at all. And repeated this four times, so it was, wasn't a mistake. It wasn't a mistake. And I couldn't convince her that Bible shows that's a false gospel. But just... There's, there's, uh, where are we, where am I going here? Uh, they are all gone out of their way, and they are together become unprofitable. There's none that doeth good, no, not one. There's none that doeth good, no, not one. You compare your works with the work of God, and you're saying you're, you're pretty good? No, you're not. All our righteousness is as filthy rags before God. Now, uh, your niece ought to know what a filthy rag is, right? All these, um, uh, it's a term that is, uh, it's for females, okay? For we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. You think about our righteousness and compared with the righteousness of God, there's no comparison. We are... In, all of us, we are in need of a Savior. If we were good, we wouldn't need a Savior. We're not good. We're not even close. And we're all a bunch of screw-ups. We need a Savior. That's what's the whole point of everything. All right? The law is our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ, to bring us to faith in Christ. All right? Wherefore, the law is our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come... We are no longer under a schoolmaster. See, we're not good. We're not good. Right. And of course, that pastor told us the quickest way to make ourselves good enough, which is to give that church more money, more money, more money, because they had just started a very expensive addition to the building. Wow. See, now that's uh, very similar to, I mean, <laughs> I don't doubt that this goes on all over the world. The last time I went to a church, the, the, the preacher, he stood up with the collection plate on his hand, held it above his head, and in, as emphatic as I'd ever seen him, he pointed to the collection plate and said, This is Jesus. 
I think he was upset that he wasn't getting that he wasn't getting enough money or perhaps he was just upset that I wasn't giving him my money all right and the reality of the matter is I should have been asking him for money and not me giving him money my guys I mean he's wearing he drives a nice car guy wears a suit and tie and I know I know who he is he guys got money and it's to me it's, it's hard for me to comprehend why in the world would I give him money he got a lot more money than I got I should be asking him for money and yet he stands before God and everybody holding up the collection plate saying this is Jesus no. I mean you gotta wonder is this the whole is this a business are these guys standing and posing, posing themselves as Christians and pastors and all this sort of stuff so that they can get money from you is that what this is about because that's what it looks like that's what it looks like to me all right. All right, MGO Vex, Satan is eternally married to the other archangels. Sex is okay within a marriage according to God. Uh, well, okay. <laughs> Se let's start with that last part. Yeah, sex is okay within a marriage according to God in this world. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to argue against that. Okay. But like I pointed out in the very beginning, that in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given a marriage but are as the angels God in heaven so there is no marriage in the life to come hereafter all right and so because there's no marriage there is no sex now this thing uh, Satan is eternally married to the other archangels that's just that's just uh, nonsense right uh, that's just nonsense eternally married well Satan's coming to an end he's gonna be thrown into the lake of fire all right and we read about that. Uh, oh, I, you know, Revelation. Let's just go to Revelation 20 here. Make this real simple. Let's see. Let's just uh, establish here the fact that he laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. All right. You want to get technical and Satan. It's all the same thing. All right. And then Satan is thrown into the lake of fire. All right. Where are we at here? Oh. Right there, and the devil, the deceived, was thrown in the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet, and they shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. All right, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This second death. So, the devil or the Satan. This idea of Satan is eternally married to other archangels. That's um, that's not supported by the Bible at all. All right, and what we're putting our hope into is that God is going to stomp his foot on the head of Satan and destroying all evil forever and so this this whole eternally married thing that's uh, you're a little bit too Mormonish right there a little bit too Mormonish right, it's nonsensical so uh, you guys any of you have any follow-ups uh, you know, you want to have a beef with what I'm saying? Okay, that's fine. But let's talk about it. You know, if, if you disagree with what I'm saying, just let's talk about it. All right? What is the duty of man? All right? Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments. This is the whole duty of man. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. 